Hello. Hello there. I'm back doing this again. Live from me garage number three. Um, as usual, um, if you're tuning in, please uh, let me know. Um, let me know that you can see me. Let me know that you can hear me. Um, yeah, just uh, any comments to uh, let me know that sound and visuals are all uh, working as they should. That you know you can hear my voice. That it's not just coming out of one side of you know the speaker. Uh, Beck, hey Beck, evening, all good here. And um, when you say all good here, um, does that mean all good there, or all good here, or all good everywhere? You know, I need specifics, Beck. I need specifics. If I hey, all good from Paula, all good again. I need specifics, people. Um, <laughs> Because if I need to quickly uh, muck around with anything, um, well, then that's what I got to do. Um, do I? Here we go. I should put that a bit. Um, okay. Hi. Uh, hi, L. I can hear me. That's a good start. Sounds great, Karen. As Karen says, so that's good. Uh, looking good and sounding good, Bob. Sounds ace. Oh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Um, I know that um, lighting may not be optimal, but, you know, this is my garage. Literally my garage. You know, obviously converted into a studio, but still my garage. And, um, you know, I've, I've arranged some lighting and stuff around the place, but, um, but you know, it's it's certainly not a, uh, it's a, not a, a production studio. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Um, and normally when I'm in the studio, I don't want a lot of uh, lighting. Um, but normally when I'm in the studio, I'm not broadcasting um, uh, to the world. So, yeah, thanks everybody um, for uh, messaging me and letting me know that it all sounds good. So that's great. That's a good start. Oh my God, I finally am getting my head around this stuff. Um, yeah. Um, and I don't know if I said this uh, last time or in some other forum, but um, it has made me laugh a little bit. The fact that um, most people were kind of on, most musicians anyway uh, that I saw were just all over this stuff within about, you know, a month of uh, COVID and lockdowns and everything. And I'm just getting my head around it now as we sort of move out of it and start moving beyond all of that stuff the lockdowns and everything else. But, you know, well, they say better late than never. So, you know, um, here I am. Hi, oh, hi, Kath. Uh, Moodworthy, says L. Thank you, well, well, I'm not sure. I mean, it's kind of the mood, the lighting, from what I can see, looking back at me on the screen, it's it's real borderline. It's, it, it's, it's, it's on, it's borderline being like a um, creepy sort of, uh, old school kind of horror movie lighting, you know, um, with probably just a few slight changes, I could probably make it look quite ominous. Um, that's not the, that's not the vibe that I'm going for, obviously. Um, <laughs> um, how was everybody's Easter? Did everybody have a bit of a break from things? Hi, Jude. Um, I hope so. Um, I think, uh, you know, given the uh, events of the last um, year and a bit now, um, and, you know, different people have experienced that in different ways. But, um, yeah, I think probably there's a lot of people that probably need need a break, deserve a break from, you know, all that's going on. Um, hey, Corey, the break isn't over yet. So, yep, sorry, mate. Yep, still got to got a week to go don't worry um yeah i went we uh just came back from a camping trip 
uh, the other day. So I spent most of my day um, quite unglamorously, if that's a word, uh, cleaning everything because the weather was, it was fine. The weather was fine. It drizzled a bit. Everything kind of came home a bit wet and muddy. If anybody goes camping, um, I'm sure they would know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but obviously we went with my two kids and also with uh, Brett, my brother, drummer from Jebediah, uh, and his partner and their daughter, um, who's three, so quite a bit younger than my kids. But um, So yeah, it was a family affair. And, um, and you know, like I think it went quite well. I don't recall ever hearing my kids say that they were bored. So I'll chalk that up as a win. I think, especially considering, um, <laughs> hey Phil, like yeah, I love camping. Um, hi Kathleen. Um, yeah, I chalked that up as a win. There was no on boards. Um, in fact, very little sort of grizzling whatsoever. So, you know, that bodes well for future camping trips where the weather will be possibly fantastic. But, you know, at the same time, as a West Australian, Living in Victoria, I have become frustratingly aware that, uh, that you know, sunny days in April aren't exactly Victoria's strong suit. It's not really something that Victoria does. Sometimes you get lucky. I mean, a week before, it was beautiful where I live here. Uh, but, yeah, most of the time you expect the weather to be fairly inclement. Um, and that it was. So that's my, <laughs> that's my rundown of my last, uh, you know, few days, my, my weekend, I guess, as it was. Um, and now I'm uh, back at home and, um, yeah, a few days off. And then next thing for me is um, going up to Echuca, which for those who don't know, Echuca is a town right on the Murray River on the border of Victoria and New South Wales. And, um, and hey, Elizabeth, um, like oh you went camping in Glenworth Valley in the late nineties yeah right we did a festival did a festival in Glenworth Valley in the in the late nineties too I believe or early two thousands um but um yes yeah, so what was I saying oh that's right so Echuca I'm playing a couple of shows on paddle steamers on the Murray River in Echuca um which you know is going to be novel I well in fact I've actually done one of them before a couple of years ago. Um, but it's the people who run the Riverboats Festival who are putting these gigs on. So yeah, I'll be, you know, putting along the Murray River on Saturday and Sunday playing a show on a boat. And you know, who doesn't love a show on a boat? It's fairly rare, um, but yeah, it should be lots of fun. But I guess the main, you know, the main news for me and the thing that um, I most want to talk about and I most want people to know about is the uh, news that my new record Tomorrowland comes out on Friday it's finally it's finally coming out and you know this is a a, a, a victory of sorts um, just given the the, uh, the gestation that the album has had um, because it's had quite a lot of challenges thrown its way, um, even before COVID happened. Just getting it, just just getting to the studio, into the studio, and having all the guys in the band all there, and Stephen Schramm, the producer there, and just organising all that and making that all happen. Because we did it all independently and finance, self financed and everything. Just getting to that point felt like such a like ah, oh, we did it, we're here. And then while we were finishing recording. The album, that's when co lockdowns, COVID hit, all the gigs were cancelled for the, you know, pretty much the rest of the year, the foreseeable future. In Victoria, it ended up being pretty much till the end of the year. I know in some states, it wasn't that bad, but in Victoria, it was. Um, so all through last year, I spent uh, just basically finishing, finishing the album remotely, so mixing it remotely. Um, Stephen uh, mixed it from his house um, up in northern New South Wales. Um, doing all the artwork um, with um, Carl, who does the did a beautiful job. He's done my artwork for all my records, the last three albums, uh, all remotely. The video clips with Arlo, uh, remotely. So, pretty much spent all of last year just 
finishing all the bits and pieces that needed to be finished. Um, and then all the, you know, here we are. It's twenty twenty one, and um, the record's coming out. So yeah, it's. I don't think I've ever. Well, I know I've never. I've never gone more than a year between walking out of the studio and the record coming out. That's the longest I've ever had to wait. So yes, it is a minor miracle. Well, no, that's an exaggeration. It's not a minor miracle. It's a. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I'm very, very uh, pleased that the record's coming out. And I'm also really effing proud. I'm going to say effing just in case my kids are watching, because I got in trouble last time for swearing. Really effing proud of this album. Um, I think it's a. I think it's good, and people are responding to it really well. And that's super exciting. Um, hey, Heidi. Hi, Kylie. Uh, Fry yay, says Kylie. Indeed, I will be yaying on Friday for sure. Um, but uh, yes, so what was I saying? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I am I am really proud of this record, and I do think it's really good, and people are responding to, to it really well. And um, that just means so much more now than it ever used to because I've been doing this for a while now. Um, uh, this is the sixth Bob Evans record. I've done five with Jeb and I, and you know, getting on close to thirty years. I, I think ninety five. I started. I've never been good at maths. Um, so that's a long time to be around. It's a long time to be making records. A long time to be, you know, trying to get people's attention, and um, and also too, from a personal point of view, it's a long time to be, um, you know, pushing my creativity you know trying to stay creative and stay um excited and 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 i have been and yeah so i feel like this record is a um is a is i like it you know and most of the time ah, look you never know you never know but i feel like i feel good about everything that's happening at the moment so yeah um all right um i should ask some questions uh answer some questions <laughs> I'm gonna, well, i could ask you questions i suppose um brizzy morgue any plans to print Suburban Kid and Goodnight Bull Creek on vinyl? No, is the short answer to that. Uh, Suburban Kid, for those who don't know, was my first record. Goodnight Bull Creek was my third. The two records on the either side of Suburban Songbook that have never had a vinyl release. Um, I, of course, you know, I'd love for them to be released on vinyl. Um, so if anybody working at EMI, my old record label, um, is watching and listening, hey guys, we could still make it happen, you know. Um, any chance of your Zero to Heroes EP being made available to purchase at some stage? It's the only Bob Evans missing from my collection. Well, uh, this is from, still from Brizzy Morgue. Um, Zero to Heroes EP was something that I put out before a tour, and it was just home demos of songs that didn't make uh, my last record, actually, cover itself. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we can put them on Bandcamp or something. Um, you know, I, I, I can't imagine them getting a actual like professional release but maybe that can just be stuck up on Bandcamp or something and the you know and the five people who want to listen to it can <laughs> listen to it there um hi lee she's asked no or she or he i'm sorry i'm not sure no annie's lane tonight bob uh no no annie's lane tonight um i'm not and i'm not going to uh promote <laughs> what i am what I am uh, partaking in tonight. Um, um, hey, Ruth, looking forward to getting myself a copy and seeing you back on the road. I'm very much looking forward to you receiving a copy and me being back on the road. Um, it's been a long time. So I'm going to be announcing a tour. So the, the album comes out on Friday and I'll be announcing a tour along with that. You know, I feel like uh, I can say that. Um, there's only 46 people watching, so I think it's pretty safe. Um, Heidi asks, will you tour with Josh Pike again? That was one of my favourite shows ever in Byron Bay. Well, yes, touring with Josh is a, a joy, and um, I'm sure that uh, uh, there will be another opportunity to do that in the future. Um, Josh has got new stuff coming out this year as well, so who knows? Maybe when we kind of finish you know, working our own records, we might uh, join forces again. Who knows? But um, it's always uh, a possibility um yes all right well i have been yabbering on for 15 minutes so i thought that um tonight i would play uh three songs off tomorrowland songs that i haven't played before 
um, which, uh, yeah, songs that I've never played, so, you know, see how that goes. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd ch play some songs off the record that, um, that, you know, will pro that are probably, that will never be singles or anything like that, so, um, I'll play some album tracks, some deep cuts off the record. Oh, has anybody been listening to Double J? All this week, Double J are, um, featuring the record, so they're playing, like, they're playing songs, most of the songs of the record, record, actually. There's 11 songs on the album. I think they're playing about seven or eight. So if you're listening to Double J every day, you're probably going to hear most of the record before Friday. Um, uh, so, yeah, Natalie Salvo. Hi, Natalie. If you could have any guest on the Bobcast, living or dead, who would you choose and why? Um, oh, jeez, living or dead. Um, that's tough. Maybe, you know, I'm just going to... Um, I'm just going to, can we make it just living? Um, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mind talking to Barack Obama. Um, I've got lots of dead heroes, but, um, geez, I don't know. It's hard to imagine uh, having them on the podcast. <laughs> I've usually got a really good imagination. It's weird that that question has kind of stumped me. I think I think it's because like you know your heroes don't necessarily they're not always the best people to talk to on a podcast you know um I don't know I think the the Bobcast for those who haven't heard it it's a podcast that I put out the kind of idea of it is to talk to people that I'm already kind of friends with most of the time I am and um and it's just like a casual conversation. I don't think that I could have a casual conversation with, uh, you know, the ghost of Kurt Cobain. I think it would be, um, <laughs> I think it would be a bit weird. Um, all right. Um, why don't, I should probably play a song because I have been talking for quite a bit and, um, um, you know, there's a good chance that people will not really get sick of that. Um, I know most, I know I get sick of listening to myself. Um, all right, let's have a go at this. Um, all right, how's it sound? All right, um, this is a song called Bad Mood. Um, and I guess the main thing that sticks out and sticks in my head about this song is that, um, it was the last song that I was, um, the last song that I wrote before going to the studio. Didn't really finished demoing it properly um so it was really i was working on it right up until we went to the studio and um i think it's come out really cool um but anyway this is a sort of my first attempt at playing it to an audience um all right walking around under a cloud i was in a bad mood in a bad mood Hiding away, got nothing to say. You're in a bad mood, in a bad mood. And just like the day, get back to the day. Now it's too late to talk, we're too tired to fight. Just let it rain another day. So come around. Before I drown, I can't keep this up, now it's my end of stand Carrying on, forever long, this doesn't feel right, I remember you wrong All I know, all I know, is that was yesterday And I don't feel that way anymore Drinking gin and sleeping in. I was in a bad mood, in a bad mood. It was something I did, or was it something that I said? Put you in a bad mood, in a bad mood. 
just like the day Gave in to the night Now it's too late to talk We're too tired to fight Just let it rain Another day So come around Before I drown Can't keep this up Now it's way out of style Carrying on Forever long This doesn't feel right I remember you wrong I need to know Need to know That was yesterday And I don't feel that way It's Uncle Bad Mood. What a happy sounding song for a sad lyric. Uh, Brian Maloney. Hey, Bob, how close were things getting broken watching the footy on the weekend? Oh. <laughs> well, um, I I didn't really watch the footy properly because I was um, I was camping. So that was probably for the best. <laughs> uh yeah, I saw bits of it, but yeah. I was trying to um trying to be with I mean I think it's a good I mean I still have my phone with me and but I think it's good to attempt to kind of be a bit, little bit screen free every now and then. Um especially if you're going camping. It's a good opportunity to kind of get away from the screen a bit. Um because yeah, well no, I know I spend far more time on it than I probably should and most people probably do um thanks everybody um i'm just thank you for your virtual applause <laughs> oh matt matt's in a rad mood well, maybe that's what i should have called the song <laughs> i was in a rad mood mm. i was in a rat in a rad mood in a rad mood you know it, it could work um, <laughs> it's too late. Um, it sounds like it could be a um, what's it sound like a Best Coast? It could be a Best Coast song. They, they'd probably write a song that sounds like that called Rad Mood. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Brian, yes, think lucky about the football. It would have put you in a bad mood. Um, well, yes. Well, the result put me in a bad mood for like a little bit, but. You know, we can't dwell on things like that. At the end of the game, it's end of the game. At the end of the day, it's a game of football. You know, it's silly to let something like that rule your emotions. Um, so, uh, so we try not to. And you know, I don't think people probably want to hear me talk about football much um, on this. I don't know. If you do, tell me. But I doubt that you do. Um, thanks so much for uh, <laughs> tuning in again. This is the third. Of these, I tried one before the end of last year, and you know, with mixed results. Uh, but then I went and invested in some actual equipment, and uh, now I think I've I've got it sorted out. Um, so, so yes, this that is good. So this is the third one of these. Um, you know, I'm I might do another, but you know, I'm going to be going on tour. I'm going to be hitting the road for real soon. So you know. There's a limit to how how many sort of virtual live uh, things I want to do before I, you know, can get out and do it for real. Um, and hopefully you guys want to be a part of that too. I really hope so because I don't really want to be playing to empty rooms. Um, any more questions? What else have we got? Um, Sarah, I like hearing you talk about footy because it reminds me that you're a sand graver. Okay, well... But there are other things we could talk about that could remind you that I'm a sand grouper. Uh, Tracy, will you be coming to Adelaide? Of course, absolutely. It wouldn't be a, a national tour without going to Adelaide. And besides, you know, I would never do a tour that you can go to Perth and Adelaide's on the way. So, um, uh, Natalie, do you write musical lyrics first? <laughs> and did this process change at all for Tomorrowland? Did I write the musical lyrics? Um, sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Sometimes I wonder if Justin Bieber writes the musical lyrics first. Um, 
I never write the lyrics first. Never. I can't think of a single time where I've written the lyrics first. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just not... That's just not the way it works for me. It's a, it starts with a melody. It always starts with melody. And the melody informs everything else. The, what the, the way that I feel about the melody guides me to the next step, you know, which is making words and um, and meaning and attaching meaning to the melody. So it's all comes from the it all comes from the sound of the tune. I uh, you know I'd like to think that someday I might be able to do things differently, but um, but yeah, that's how I've always done it, and hard for me to imagine now. Heidi, she never writes lyrics first either. Me and Heidi. The same, you know. We, she understands. She gets it. <laughs> but I mean, I yeah, it's just not. I don't sit and write poetry, you know. Um, Sarah Hill, what thoughts do you have on misogynists being called out in the industry? Wow. Okay. Um, what thoughts do I have about misogynists being called out in the industry, in this industry, or any industry in life in general? I think it's really important. Um. I think most people that I know um, think that it's really important um, because clearly for way too long, you know, there have been too many uh, men in positions of power. I mean, you only have to look at what's happening, have been happening in camp. Too many men in positions of power that have been abusing that power for way too long and they've been getting away with it and that's half the reason probably why they do it because they know they can get away with it the other part half of the reason why they do it i'm guessing is perhaps a sickness in the in the head or perhaps some kind of power narcissism or something i don't know the psychology behind all of that but um but it's been going on too long and you know the reason that i get surprised when i hear about some of the people that get called out is because I had no idea that it was happening. And so then I can only assume that the only the reason I have no idea that it's happening is because nobody talks about it, you know. Women don't talk about it because they don't think they're going to be believed and men don't talk about it because, I guess, because they want to, um, you know, exert that control and secrecy comes along with that. So... Uh, look, I absolutely think that or everything that's been happening lately um, in terms of call-out culture, um, I think is positive. It's ugly, it's uncomfortable, you know, but unfortunately, there's I, don't, I can't see how anything's going to change or how we are able to confront any issue, including this one, without going through a shitload of discomfort. Um, and... You know, we just have to, we just have to be there for that. We just have to deal with that. Um, Nathan, hi mate. My oldest daughter, Lucy, who's ten, is a budding singer-songwriter. Any tips for her about the writing process? Lucy's ten. Um, gee, how do you give tips to a ten-year-old about the writing process? My oldest daughter is nine, and she's just started learning guitar. And I'm a terrible teacher, awful teacher. I just lack patience. Because I was self-taught, you know, so I, I don't know how to teach something that I just figured out myself. Um, just because you can, just because you have a, a, a certain skill, it doesn't automatically make you a good teacher. Just like you know, some of the best teachers out there aren't necessarily, um, you know, the ones that have the most skill at that actual thing. They're just really, really good at the at the job of teaching, of like passing on knowledge, of working with people. Um, so uh, what advice, what tips? Um, I guess just write as much as possible, uh, Lucy, and have it, and just enjoy it as much as you can and try not to be too, too critical of what you're doing. Even if you write something that you think, you know, is no good, um, try not to let that stop you from, from continuing on and moving forward. Um, because even as an adult, even to this day, you know, still have that, I still have those, have to get through that. That barrier of self-doubt and being overly critical of myself. So, um, so yeah, just enjoy it and don't be too hard on yourself. There's my tip. Um, 
uh, Dory, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. I'd love to hear you play Have You Ever Fallen In Love With Someone You Shouldn't Have. Oh, okay, there's a cover I did. Um, Ever Fallen In Love With Someone You Shouldn't Have, which I'm guessing is what you're referring to by a band called Buzzcocks. Um, I haven't played that for a long time, so I'm not going to play it tonight. But um, if anybody wants to hear my cover of that, you can stream it on Spotify. Um, it, it actually... Um, it, it, I actually did that. It wasn't that long after I did that that um, that uh, the lead singer from the Buzzcocks uh, passed away, which was um, a kind of you know strange uh, uh, timing. Um, hi, Jeffrey. Saw you at Fringe doing the Twenty Seven show. You look like a kid in a candy store covering Nevada and Co. Yes, I was. I think I talked about this last time. Um, about the 27 Club show that I did at the Adelaide Fringe Festival with Sarah McLeod, amongst others. Um, and yeah, it was great fun. I got to sing Come As You Are and Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Pretty much the first time since I was... Um, probably since I was 17. Would, would have been the last time that I, that I uh, sang those songs. And I'm never really... I mean, Come As You Are, I don't think I'd ever sung before. Smells Like Teen Spirit, I definitely would have sung a couple of times. And when Jeb and I first started out, we used to cover a few Nirvana songs. But I don't know. If we would have done Smells Like Teen Spirit, but I think we did, did some of their more, I don't know, lesser known songs. Um, because we were, uh, you know, such massive fans. Hey, Michelle, what's happening from Hugo? Hey, Hugo, how you going, buddy? Um, what's happening? Well, I'm just hanging out in my garage, you know. Um, <laughs> talking... To a computer screen, which you know ordinarily would be a lot weirder than it is now, but you know, twenty twenty, it shifted, it shifted the the axis of weird, and it, suddenly a lot of things that um, were suddenly a lot of things that would have been very strange before were uh, became a lot more normalised, including um, doing stuff like this, <laughs> um, and it'll. Um, It'll probably continue, I think. Um, all right. Um, keep asking questions, all right? And I will get to them. Um, but I'm going to maybe play another song um, off the record. Just let me wet my whistle. So, yeah, I decided for those who've just come in... For those who've just come in, um, I decided tonight um, I'd play kind of songs off Tomorrowland that, you know, may not get much attention in terms of, yeah, I don't know, just the album tracks. Um, so, you know, songs like Born Yesterday and Concrete Heart, you know, I've played them live and on the on these uh, streaming thing, on, the, on this thing that I'm doing, whatever it's called. Um, and hey, Mark, how you going? Um, and so I thought tonight I would play just, you know, not those ones, some songs that, you know, you wouldn't have heard. So anyway, this is a song called Falling. Venus and June comes roaring to life, talking in tongues and signaling strife. I want you to know. I want you to know That you've got me Forever and always Cause I'm I'm always a falling I'm always a falling Whenever I Hear a calling I'm always a falling Raise the white flag, you know I always give in I'm tripping over myself, just to hear what you think I need you to know, I need you to know Yeah, I'm sorry for all of me, everything I I'm 
I'm always a falling. I'm always a falling. When it be right, hear it calling. I'm always falling. When it be right, hear it calling. I'm always a falling. I'm always a falling. I'm always a falling. When in the right, hear a calling. I'm always a falling. That's a little ditty called Fallen. Um, Natalie, another question. What are your thoughts on musos writing their biographies, e.g. Tim Rogers or Kid Books? Would you ever write one? Yeah, um, I really enjoyed the, well, the Tim Rogers book um, was, uh, you know, it was a memoir um, more than an autobiography. And, you know, I think that there is a, a di big distinction between the two. I, I, I love Tim's book. Um, I also really enjoyed Tex Perkins' book that he that wrote that came out around about the same time. Um, and my mate Josh has been doing kids' books, which I'm going to buy. I will. I, I haven't yet, but I, I will. I, I'm wondering if maybe my kids may have outgrown outgrown them. Actually, they may be a little bit too old for them. But um, but yeah. Um, uh, look, this has come up before. I think. Um, I I love the idea of writing a book. Probably, you know, and that probably is just all steeped in ego. Um, everybody I know, well, the people that I know that have written books all say that it's the worst, it's the most awful um, <laughs> experience. It's really hard. It sounds like writing a book is really damn hard. Um, it sounds a lot harder than writing a record. And, um, and, and, People who do it can often come away feel, get being quite worn down, ground down from the experience. I'm not sure what the particular reasons are for that. I think part of it may be sort of submitting stuff and having uh, constantly having to rewrite and all that kind of stuff. Or I don't know. Um, but I love the idea of it, and you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe one day, you know, I'll. Uh, I'm not sure what I would. Um, I would have to just write about myself because I'm not really quite sure what else I would write about. Um, Jill, G. Norman, what's the Neil Young song that brings a smile to your heart when you play it? Neil Young. Well, there's loads of Neil Young songs that I love. Um, um, I have been listening a lot lately to The Needle and the Damage Done, which is a pretty harrowing song, but I really love it. Um um uh, it's it's only love can break your heart and only love can break your heart i think that's the uh, name of the song it's a beautiful new young song as well um but there's tons there's heaps um troy asks going back to car boot sale for a moment can i ask why matter of fact happy tears was one single film clip yeah i don't know i think it was just the record company's idea um happy tears and and matter of fact came out as i guess like a you know, what they would have called a double A side um, back in the day when they used to release physical singles or like seven inch vinyls and stuff. But um, so, yeah, I think it was just an idea and probably <laughs> probably helped keep costs down as well, doing two at the same time. Uh, Brian, is there a rock album buried in Bob somewhere or is that all for Kev? Yes, there is a rock album buried in Bob, but it's not buried in Bob anymore because it's about to come out on Friday. It's called Tomorrowland. And it is my rock album. It's uh, the uh, the rock album that I've been wanting to make for the last few years. Um, and, yeah, f just figured out a way to do it in my style. And, um, yeah, this is the Bob Evans rock album. This is me doing a rock record. Um, 
Brizzy Morg is back. I know you're a massive Beatles fan, but was your song Photographs influenced by Elliot Smith? I know Deep Cut, but awesome song. It's a song called Photographs off my first album, Suburban Kid. Uh, L has pre-ordered today. Thank you so much, L. I really appreciate it. Please pre-order the record. You could win a record player. If you pre-order it, L, um, go to my website, bobevans.com.au, and find out how you can um, win a record player after pre-ordering. It's really it's just a pretty simple step. Um, I think you just have to plug in your receipt or whatever that you would have got when you got your pre-order, just to show proof. And then you go into the running to win a record player and a signed test vinyl, which I just put in the post today, actually. Um, anyway, where was I? Um, oh, Photographs. Yeah, so Photographs is a song off Suburban Kid. Most people won't know it. Um, uh, was it influenced by Elliot Smith? Ah, oh, well, I mean, I guess around that time. No, not that song so much. There's another song on the record called She's Alone. And that was influenced by Elliot Smith. I was definitely listening to a lot of Elliot Smith around the time of writing the album. You know, he was a... This is going back to 2000 and... Well, those songs I was writing between sort of 2000 and 2003, and so I just discovered Elliot Smith at that time. And um, um, so, but yeah, photographs, I don't know what, yeah, I can't really remember what musical influences kind of um, brought that one about. I can't remember. I was listening to a lot of kind of, you know, pop, not just Beatles stuff, but kind of indie kind of pop stuff like Flaming Lips, with, you know, and stuff like that. Might have had a had something to do with it. I'm not sure. Um, does everybody does every artist kind of talk openly about their musical influences? I feel like I do it a lot. Maybe too much. Maybe not supposed to be um, as open about that stuff. I just don't. You know. I guess I just sometimes I like to celebrate it, the influences. That's all. Um, Alyssa, I'm just so flipping excited for Friday. I am too. I am too. I'm really excited. I'm glad you are too, Alyssa. Um, what else have you got for us, guys? As we kind of uh, start round into our, the, the the last quarter. I know I wasn't going to uh, talk about football anymore, but that was definitely a football reference. We are heading into the final quarter of of this. Um, Again, thanks a lot for tuning in. Those of you out there that have tuned in, um, and I really hope that you like Tomorrowland. Um, when it comes out on Friday, please buy it. I mean, stream it, you know. God, I stream records all the time. But obviously, I'd really appreciate it if you bought it as well. <laughs> um <clears throat> Brian, what's your thoughts in regards to the large number of tribute bands that are on the scene now? <clears throat> tribute bands? I don't know. Uh, there are definitely a lot of um, there are a lot of tribute concerts. In fact, I'm thinking about. I just heard about one recently. Um, the girl here in Melbourne, the girl who um, starred in the stage production that celebrated the music of Carol King. I'm, I'm not. I didn't see it. I can't remember what it's called. So apologies. But um. She's going on tour and doing tapestry from start to finish. Um, and I'm probably going to go. Um, so, you know, I think with tribute stuff, I'm, I, I'm all for it. I love it. I think as long as it's done with, you know, I think you can tell if the people involved or the people behind it are really emotionally invested in what they're doing. And I think when when people are really emotionally invested in the music, and they're just they're there to honor honor that, whether it's the record or the artist or both, um, then I'm 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 here for it. You know, I'm totally here for it. Um, so yeah, there has been a lot like Beatles stuff. I've been involved in you know Beatles stuff, Bob Dylan, um, and I've really enjoyed doing it. So you know. And it's actually been really good in terms of I've I've learned I've come away learning so much from doing it as well. So I would never um, never want to uh, deny anybody else that same opportunity. You know I think it's good. Um, oh, El, it's your birthday on Friday. Well, now you found it. You found me out, El. Um, this record 
is actually my birthday present to you. I've been working on it for years. I know it's a big, it's a pretty big gesture, um, me making a whole record just for you, but, um, but uh, you know, what can I say? I hope you like it. <laughs> um, Mark asks, uh, always wanted to ask about Friday Come Five. Another song from my first album. This is it. <laughs> Songs from Suburban Kid um, popping up here. Friday Come Five. Was there a story behind it? As it's a bit different to a Bob song. It is a pretty different Bob song. There's not really a story behind it. I think I just wanted to um, write a song that was kind of dancey. Um, I'm not sure what my kind of musical kind of reference points for that were at the time. But yeah, I think I just wanted to do something that, um, that was a bit kind of dancey. But it is really different to all my other songs, you're right. Um, and it's something that I have, that probably haven't really done anything like since. Um, <laughs> Uh, Sarah has a new turntable already, so she just needs to spin the arm. Well, that's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear. Um, all right. Uh, maybe I should do one more song. Um, so the first song I did was Bad Mood. The second song I did was called Falling. Um, tell me, did you like either of those? Which did you like more? Um, they're both going to be on the record. Um, as is this tune. This like, the other one I wanted to do was... Um, um is this is the song that uh, the last song on the record this is the final song so the record opens with born yesterday which hopefully you've heard and it ends with this uh song which is called end of the day um which is a, had a pretty kind of long had a long life before it went into the studio i think the the, the basic kind of chord structure and melody for this I think I might have come up, started coming up with like five, as long as maybe even five years ago, or close to, it was a long time ago. And it just took me ages to kind of attach anything to it. And then I've, you know, um, yeah, I, I think I finally sort of found a way into it um, over the summer of 2019, 2020, going into record and, um, well, actually, it was before the summer that the Australia and Australia was, you know, covered by uh, fire, covered in fire. That was an awful, awful summer. It was, um, and I'm, you know, because of COVID, it's almost we've almost, well, people like me have almost forgotten about it. Not the people that were directly affected by it; they're still living through it. Uh, but COVID came along and directed a lot of attention away from the bushfires that were happening in Australia. Um, which is a you know which is a real shame because um, not only were lots of people affected by it and are probably still dealing with the ramifications of all of that um, and maybe not getting the support that they need, but also there was a conversation around climate change that um, that was uh, that was becoming far more mainstream. Um, which was really, which is really needed, and um, so yeah, I, I I wrote this sort of in the aftermath, I guess, of all of that. So yeah, this is called "End of the Day." I make plans 
not knowing where tomorrow lands at the end of the day. End of the day comes with conversations now. Try as I may to look him in the eye. Still we dream. We make plans, not knowing where tomorrow lands. I hold my breath. For what's to come? A burning sky. We cannot run at the end of the day. End of the day swells around in smoke rings now. And in what I just can't be sure. Still, we dream, we make plans, not knowing where. Tomorrow lands. I hold my breath for what's to come. A burning sky. We cannot run at the end of the day. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. End of the It's called End of the Day. And yeah, that's the last song on Tomorrowland. Which comes out on Friday. Um, Sarah, can I have a tour for my birthday, please? You've got till November. Well, yes, you can have a tour for your birthday. I will be announcing a tour on Friday when my record comes out. Um, and yes, I hope uh, you all can join me and I can play all these songs for you. Um, I'll play old stuff too, of course, but I really want to play a bunch of songs off this record. Um, what else have we got? Virtual applause. Thank you. Love a bit of virtual applause. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, uh, Lennon like it. <laughs> Uh, come to Cairns. I'd love to come to Cairns, Josh. Love, I love that part of the world. Central Queensland, North Queensland, it's the best. It's so great. When I go to Central North Queensland or Northern Territory um, or north of WA, the Kimberley region, I just feel like, uh, uh, I, I really feel like I'm on holidays. It's like, if it's just a real, there's just a real different, uh, it's just a real different part of the world. Real different part of the country. 
Um, so I love that part. I would love to get up there. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It's probably time to kind of start wrapping this up. Um, but, yes, I appreciate you tuning in, and I hope it's all sounded good and um, and the lighting isn't too uh, reminiscent of a 1960s horror movie. Um, and, yes, the album comes out Friday. Tour announced on Friday. It's all, it's all going to happen. It's all happening then. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot for uh, pre-ordering the record if you have. Um, and just supporting what I do because it means a, a lot to me and I'm really excited about this record because there seems to be, um, you know, there seems to be a lot of goodwill coming towards it, um, which, like I said earlier, uh, is a really exciting thing. Um, when you've been doing this shit for however many years I've been doing it for, so long I've lost count. I started in 95. I guess it's getting close to 30 years. So um yes. Thanks a lot everybody. I'm gonna um I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna sign out. Thanks heaps guys and um yeah. Take care, I'll see you all again soon. See ya, bye Tracy, see ya Heidi. <laughs> see everybody. Bye.